Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about July 13th, um, LOL DFS Slate. We're back with a, we're back to a four game slate, two games in China and two games in Korea. So yeah, let's dive in without any further ado. LPL, um, it's LGD versus BLG. LGD is bringing back Shadow to start at Jungle. Um, and then AG is starting in the mid lane and Fearness is starting in the top lane. I think LGD has been, had been playing with some swaps with Chilidzi in the top lane and now Fearness is starting. And then I know uh, Kui was starting in, for LGD. I know Shadow came in in the middle of that series, last series. Now they're both starting um, and the brightest spot for LGD's this split, awesome is starting and I think he's going to be the key to be able to upset BLG today. And that's going to be my match prediction just to kind of give you a heads up uh, up front. On the other hand, BLG is starting Khan again at jungle over Weiwei and then Icon over Fofo and then Rise over Doggo. So BLG is making three changes here. I know Khan started in the last series and he looked okay but I'll tell you why, um, uh, you know, on based, based on the eye test, he looked okay. But metric wise, I saw that the jungle control control percentage for BLG was actually pretty bad. Um, so I do think that's a little misleading um, as to how well Khan performed based on our eye test. So anyway, so and then Icon is starting over Fofo. Like I said, I always prefer Fofo over Icon, but Icon is a veteran. He's more experienced, so maybe that's what they need right now, you know, in their struggle in the summer split. And then Doggo was playing like Doggo, dog, dog shit, basically. So they swapped him out for Rise. And Rise is a 80 carry from the Academy affiliation um, for BLG. And he had been playing really well uh, for the BLG Academy team, but... Um, that's the academy team level. That's the academy tier. Um, now he's with the big boys, and we'll see how he does. And he likes to play carry champions, obviously, being an A to carry. So I do think he'll play better than Doggo, but, you know, is that going to be enough? I don't know. So like I said, so like so many reasons um, I do think LGD could pull up, pull this upset off. Like I said, I prefer Shadow over um, Kui. Shadow... I know was struggling a little bit, but after he got benched, he came back in the game two of that series uh, against FPX, I believe, and he played pretty decent. Um, I like him as more of an aggressive jungler over Khan uh, for BLG. I know Khan, like I said, um, looked like he was doing well, but based on the metric that I saw um, on, I think, Oracle Elixir, let me show you right here real quick. LPL teams. So in the last few series, let's check out the jungle control percentage, right? So you see BLG 44.2%. So that's really bad comparatively. Um, I know that's probably the, the jungle control percentage in the last series. Yeah, three games played. Um, and, you know, they played against, uh, I think, FPX, like I said. No, be Weibo Gaming. Okay, Weibo Gaming. So, against S, S of FM, and you, you know how I feel about S of FM. So, yeah. Um, let's see how Weibo Gaming stands here. Yeah, you see, fifty-five point eight percent over BLG's con. So. I do think he just did not have a good jungle control, control, period, Condon. Um, so I do think Shadow may have an advantage there over Con, like I said. Fearness and Ben. Ben hasn't been playing well. I mean, I know he's a very talented laner, individual skilled laner, uh, but his synergy with the team for BLG hasn't been there at all. So... 
from that standpoint, I mean, I think this is a pretty even matchup. Like I said, I think I prefer Shadow over Khan just based on that metric. And I like the way that Shadow plays, um, like to pressure the jungle, the other uh, team's jungle. And then Yeji and Icon, like I said, Icon is not a threat. In my opinion, he's more of a, like I said, experience. I don't think he can carry solo by himself. That's more of a Fofo's uh, bandwidth, I think. It's Icon is there probably to help the team win. More of like a utility mid laner, like Faker and crying maybe for UP, who, um, who I will talk about later. So I do think that's not uh, going to be that scary against EAG, I think. EAG is not the best mid laner, but I do think that's not much of a threat against EAG, I don't think. I don't think Icon is kind of like Rookie or Knight in the LPL where they can just smash and dominate the entire game by by themselves. I don't think Icon is that kind of a mid laner. So, And then, like I said, awesome is... It's, the bright spot, long bright spot for LGD, in my opinion, this uh, this split. I know Jin Zhao, their support has been pretty bad, but Awesome has been really good, and I do think he will be a good reason, key factor in LGD upsetting BLG today over Rise. Rise is more of a question mark, like I said. I mean, he's coming, getting promoted from the Academy roster, and now getting a chance to play at the big boy level. Um, so we'll see how that hap- how that full unfolds. But him playing with Crisp, Crisp has been pretty shit for the BLG. I don't know if it's Doggo or Crisp, but they're both they're they've been both really bad. And I mean, I'm sure they practice together, Rise and Crisp, but I mean, this is the first game duo game together at the competitive level. Uh, so I don't know how much of a synergy there's gonna be between these two guys in the bottom lane but also with Khan the new jungle I mean there's just so many uncertainties for BLG that can go wrong and I feel like LGD going back to their main roster with Shadow and Fearness and with the way that Awesome has been playing at AD Carry I like LGD's chances to upset BLG today I'm picking LGD to win two to one and LGD is the underdog, just to point that out. So I think it's a good GBP play. EDG versus Ultra Prime is another uh, match in China. Um, EDG has been starting these five all split and all season, basically. Um, they've actually been struggling quite a bit, um, as you will see here. They lost to Victory 5, 2-0. to zero. They lost to OMG, 2-1. to one. I mean, and they were doing well before that, I think somewhat well. I mean, they weren't elite as, as elite they used to be, but they were winning games still. But now they're losing games and they are in a funk right now. And now they're going up against Ultra Prime, um, where Ultra Prime has been up and down as well. I mean, you see here they've lost to anyone's legend, RNG, Wavel Gaming, JDG. I mean, you, I mean, Against anyone's legend in RNG and at Wavel Gaming, they've lost 0 to 2. I mean, they've gotten swept all three series. Then JDG, yeah, I mean, they lost 1 to 2. They beat Rare Adam. Rare Adam's been horrible. BLG's been pretty bad, and but they still lost. Um, so all in all, I think Ultra Prime has been struggling as well. Um, I do think EDG should win this. But like I said, EDG hasn't been playing well. So there are some holes that EDG can be um, taken advantage of. Like, for example, JJ has been playing really bad. Um, how well can Hacker play to exploit that? I don't know. I mean, Hacker and Ultra Prime, I do want to point out the jungle control percentage as well here. I mean, overall, uh, Ultra Prime has not been playing that well. Like you see here, they're at 45.6% jungle control percentage. That's pretty bad. I mean, that's the second worst um, in the LPL for the split. Second worst. <laughs> um, I do want to see how he's been doing in the last um, games. Yeah, pretty bad. Pretty bad, like really bad. I mean... So I do think EDG should win still. I don't think Hacker is good enough of a jungler or just not in form um, right now to exploit JJ's uh, struggles, I think. I think EDG will try to focus on the macro game. 
um, to win this matchup because of their struggle lately against elite teams they ha have gone up, gone up against. So I do think EDJ wins this. Maybe they'll drop a game. I don't know, maybe, um, maybe not. But either way, I do think EDG is not going to score that well, even though Ultra Prime has been giving up a lot of kills and deaths. Um, I do think that increases EDG's kill upside a tiny bit, but I, I do think EDG is going to be dictating the pace. And I do think the kill upside will likely be reduced because of EDG's tendency to focus, I think, and try to win the game this way. And, you know, from a big picture standpoint. In the LCK, it's much easier. I mean, T1 against HLE. T1 is a big, big favorite at minus 2,000. HLE has been one of the worst teams, and they have now uh, promoted uh, the, the Academy AD Carry, Chani, over Sam D. As you guys probably remember, Sam D used to start at AD Carry for HLE until this week, basically. So Chani is going to be starting at 80 carry. Um, so don't play Sam D if you are looking to play any HLE, but I don't know why you would play any, any HLE, but, and then T1, you know, the same five, I mean, all metrics point T1 having an advantage and winning. And basically, so the main question for that matchup is what is going to be the kill upside more than likely. Well, the combined kills per minute, as you can see here, is at 0 0.70. Um, both teams, HLE and T1, play at 0 0.70. So, I mean, it's it's okay. It's not that slow. It's not that fast. So it's like somewhere in the middle. Comparatively, like you'll see the Chinese teams here have much higher uh, combined kills per minute. But you see EDG and BLG tend to play a little bit slower. So it's going to be an interesting uh, matchup to target today. You know, usually I favor a lot of the LPL teams and their kill upside um, generally, but you know, given that, uh, given the EDG and BLG's presence uh, here today on this slate, uh, maybe T1 is a viable um, team to target for kill upside as well. I know T1 is probably a staple for cash lineups today because they're the biggest favorite, but in terms of the kill upside, yeah, I mean, I think T1 has it um, as long as you think HLE will put up a decent fight. Um, maybe T1 will just run them over and, and win the game like 13 to five or something like that, very low, low kills. But I do think T1 has a pretty decent moderate kill upside today um, just based on how they've been playing. And, you know, I think you saw a T1's comp in the last series, I believe where they played against Freddie Brian, I believe, um, but they fold around in game two and still won the game by playing all those carry champions. I know Carrier played Lee Sin. Um, they played like Yone, Yone Yasuo and all those carry champions that result in a lot of kills. So they were just folding around and that could happen again. I mean, just to kind of experiment with their team compositions and kind of just mess around and, you know, score a lot of kills, but I don't know. So we'll see. But I do think at the end of the day, T1 should win that matchup pretty handedly. The next LCK matchup is Gen G versus Live Sandbox. Um, Gen G is a big favorite at minus 650 over Sandbox at plus 425. Over under is at 21.5 and combined kills per minute is at 0.65. So this is the lowest combined kills per minute match on the slate amongst all four games. But um, as you guys know, Sandbox has been playing really well. I mean, Sandbox, people are saying that Sandbox is one of the maybe playoff teams uh, this split in the LCK. Um, Sandbox has been one of those teams, uh, rare, <laughs> rare teams in the LCK that have favored um, uh, do, you know, playing, you know, uh, engaging in a lot of team fights and skirmishes and all that along with T1 and Gen G and those elite teams that like to kind of, you know, snowball after gaining advantage through team fights. So Sandbox would like to fight. I mean, you see their combined kills per minute is high for that reason, but at 0.71. Actually, Sandbox has the highest combined kills per minute in the LCK overall. Um, and Gen G is, is pretty low, pretty low at 0.59. So overall it's at 0.65. But still, I mean, that's going to be the lowest that we're going to have amongst the four games. 
I mean, but Genji, I mean, Genji is Genji. I mean, I think Genji and T1 still, I mean, they're the top two teams, elite teams in the LCK. I know Genji just lost to T1 two, two series ago, I believe. And Genji, you know, is probably mad about that. But, you know, they are um, looking to win series from now on two to zero because of the game differentials that will matter um, in terms of this playoff seeding and all that that's coming up against T1. So Genji will look to, uh, you know, beat Sandbox, I think, two to zero, um, especially given that it's the second game. This is an interesting uh, perspective that I didn't really think about until now, that T1 is playing first in the LCK today. Um, Genji will see T1 probably win two to zero, and then Genji will probably be more motivated after watching that to beat Sandbox, um, you know, beat down on Sandbox, basically. So I do think um, Genji should win this matchup. I mean, Chovy over Karis in the mid lane, that should be, I mean, Chovy over Closer, um, you know, in the mid lane is probably the probably the biggest mismatch that we, we will have. And then I know Peanut has been playing really well in the jungle. Um, I know Prince and Kale for Sandbox have been playing really well in the bottom lane. But Ruler and Lehens are experienced and they know what's coming, I believe. Um, so I do think Genji will be prepared for that, um, that fire that, you know, Sandbox will throw at them. I do think Genji is going to end up winning at the end of the day. Um, I do think Sandbox will score well if they end up winning because they're going to they're gonna fight. I mean, I, I do think Sandbox makes an interesting GPP play today. Um, I do think, like I said, Sandbox has been in good form. Um, you know, if not now, they're never going to beat Genji yet, probably. Um, I do think Sandbox is probably hitting its peak in terms of their form based on their roster and their synergy. Um, but for them to win the game, it has to come through the bottom lane with Prince and Kale. So Croco helping Prince and Kale to kind of farm and scale and gain an early game advantage. But against Peanut and Ruler and Lahens, that's going to be so tough, tough. So I'm probably not going to play any sandbox, but, you know, for what it's worth, I think they, for the kill upside and the way that they play and the form that they've been in, I think it makes sense if you are playing in multiple GPP contests. I mean, I think it's worth a shot to throw a sandbox stack in there somewhere. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Um, I do have a Patreon, like I said, that I post. Um, let's see. That I post. Um, uh, prize pick bets. So yeah, I'm gonna be posting the prize, the prop bets. Um, the prop bets and the match predictions exactly here shortly in the next uh, 15 minutes. So if you are, if you guys are interested uh, in, in making those uh, prop bets, uh, let me know, or just click on the link at patreon.com at slash DFS Chan uh, underscore Chan. And yeah. And, and then I look forward to, uh, you know, chatting with you there. And also uh, if you please uh, hit like the video here, if you like the video today, um, that would mean a lot to me and to TrueDFS um, who has been sponsoring my videos and I appreciate all you guys uh, watching and yeah, good luck out there. And if you guys have any questions, you know where to reach out. Thanks. Have a good one.